Well, um, you be, I think I wanted to begin with something that you actually, uh, I think you, you touched on a bit in your introductory uh, remarks, um, uh, which is that I think this film marked uh, a few kind of shifts for you, and one that's very was really salient for people who've been following your career is, of course, the geographical uh, shift. Um, and um, so I think, you know, before the film, you, you spoke a little bit about uh, maybe kind of the initial the initial uh, attraction or allure of, of, of Colombia, but um, but I was kind of hoping you could you could elaborate on on this a little bit because. Um, uh, yeah, it just marked this. It was this very new feeling seeing one of your films, and not in not in Thailand, of course. And and um, but I'm but I'm also wondering because of the role of landscape in your work and your relationship with like the landscapes in your in the previous films and how that kind of translates into this new this, this new context of Colombia. Yes, new and new and not new, yeah. <laughs> because my editor when he saw the footage, he said, you could have shot in your backyard. <laughs> it's, it's like that. Um, but for me, the process is very different um, because also at that time, um, it's been really hot in terms of political situation in Thailand. The military um, become very aggressively, you know, um, and the issue of the monarchy. So there's so many things that, that I think that I'm, if I make, film, I have to censor myself, yeah. So maybe this is a time to, to, for this new path that I'm always curious about. And, uh, and I've been friends with Tilda for a long time that we, we dream of working together, um, but I think we need to find some place that we, we, we didn't know about, so we've become alien. And so that's a, the new process integration and and just being very really silent because in in Thailand I, I have a lot of memories about location people and yes but there I, I don't know anything uh, culture language um, the way people dress and so so it's a um, it's a big question mark and and it's a very stimulating experience that's to be silent and to to absorb you know I first went to hospitals is my favorite place. Uh, so to talk to doctors and you know just and just to be in different cities actually in Colombia, um, and I went there on and off and start this this movie start to form, mm -hmm. along with writing to Tilda about what what happened and what the experience was. Yeah. Yeah. Um, maybe it, yeah. Maybe we should talk about her then um, uh, a bit. Um, uh, you know, I th I think uh, she's perhaps like a different different kind of performer than than has a appeared in your in your work previously, and mm. and um, uh, you know, the, the quite a recognizable uh, person. Uh, you know, um, uh, it's just people who know films, um, and so uh, I'm kind of wondering. It sounds you know, it sounds like it was an intensely close uh, mm. collaboration. Um, Probably from the outset, but I was hoping mm. if you could, if uh, you could tell us a little bit about sort of uh, sort of what the what uh, the collaboration looked like, especially like before you got you got yeah. on set mm. and before you're working together, uh, uh, like as actor and director. Um, at that time, 2006, 2007, AG was um, kind of disappearing from film world, and she also having her own grief at that time, her father's passing, and she was there with him. So we share um, this idea also, um, and I share about how Colombia felt to me with the history, with the landscape, with the heavy clouds. And, uh, and so, s but I think that the, of course, she started to learn Spanish before she arrived, and then she she's the one who, who really liked to, to play with her hair. So it's something really touching for me that she she willing to, you know, let it grow and she keeps sending his picture like, hey, this is this long now, long now. So that we can try, you know, this big attempt, you know, to how how to make she 
you know, or Tilda walk in Bogota without <laughs> being Tilda is really difficult. Yeah. Um, so, so, but the work in Colombia, you know, when, when she arrived, uh, just going through normal script, um, but then it's about, it's about being there and to basically uh, operate with the crew, like really like family, like live together, dance and play. And, and Tilda has just such a, a open heart spirit that, um, that she, she say yes to everything. And, um, and she liked to, to play, to, to party. Not about getting drunk or no, but it's more about like, um, you know, dancing and being around with people. It's like to host and doing the shoot too, you know, like, okay, 50 rows of film, let's celebrate. Okay. <laughs> you know, so, so it's, it's always like, and she cook for everyone. So, so it's become part, not only on the screen, my memory of this film is, is so, um, it's, it's like two journey, the Tilda and Jessica. You know, Tilda is really different. You know, she, she's she's a totally different person. Um, but Jessica is someone of, maybe some one side of her, of the grief and the kind of, this kind of this synchronization, yeah. And and for me, the film, it doesn't feel like a film to me, actually. It feels like, it feels like um, some kind of ball that is um, metal and, <laughs> but, <laughs> but really it, it at that time, I have also problem with my relationship. So the film is about grief and about this, this association with yourself and the world, and try to reconnect. So there's something melancholy and and heavy, but but not negative. Um, I think for me, this film is is, is something that is uh, embracing loneliness and aloneness um, by also aware of this connection that we have. You know, not only for people, but for animals and the, the, the landscape, yeah. Mm, and beyond time, that's what I feel about. Everything, yeah. And um, I mean, it's the, the, the way that sound functions is always very interesting um, in, your, in your work and, and in, in this film, I, I think it, it maybe receives kind of its like grandest, uh, or what feels like kind of the, the most intricate, the most complex, the most, sort of central, centralized kind of use of sound, um, it was specifically like sound design. And, and so I was, I was wondering in, you know, even, even before you started uh, uh, filming and then, and then doing uh, any work on the sound and post-production and so on, I was kind of wondering uh, how the sonic, the sort of sonic idea of the film kind of took shape for you, um, you know, uh, did it kind of present itself amid the writing? Like, did you hear, like when you were writing, did you hear the film or did, it, mm. you know, or did it um, play out on a different, on a different sort of uh, timeline? Um, before the film started, I made one performance called Fever Room and it's a projection performance. And that uh, where the, the sound appeared, this bang, because I tried to emulate this bang in my head and yeah, but, but I was not sure that I'm going to use that sound. Uh, and the process of finding out the sound for the film is, is ex not exactly, but really close to that because I, I put the video camera in the sound mixing room with my sound designer and, and I'm trying to d explain to him. And he went through that effect library. And those are the real name of the, the <laughs> type, the, the, the file names. Yeah. yeah. So I found it very fascinating. So I, I look at this video and try to, you know, um, because in reality it take it would take hours to get that sound. Yeah. So so that kind of um, exploration and and of course uh, we shot a lot of footage and and it's a film that I I didn't actually know what I want. I just want to see this woman, you know, walking like I walk with a zombie too. That's a that's a the same. Character that that's the inspiration, yeah, Jessica Holland. Um, but but it's about this finding out and and then I think the last scene, the last scene when we shot, we try to shoot chronologically. So the last scene, it everyone cry uh, on the set uh, because we we realize oh this is the heart of the film. This is this is it. You know, it's only her journey and and when we were shooting, there's no sound. So it's me whispering them, oh, 
okay, you feel this, you know, brightest now or whatever, yeah. So it's all to the interpretation of that. And, and, and I found it really beautiful, like this Tilda and Jessica kind of merge, yeah. And, and in the sound design, we, we use, um, I try a lot because it, it, it cannot help being artificial, no? It's how to present this idea of connection through sound, you know, revelation. So there's a lot of process in that, and and we ended up using a lot of um, sound from you know re-record from Tilda, um, me and um, Ernan, talking about our whatever happiness, fear, and 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 so we used my voice a little bit, and also Tilda. I think the last word that we heard from her is um, her talking to her. Father, yeah, and we also mix in um, the first uh, recorded song of human history, yeah, in their 18 something, a French song, but but quite quite uh, manipulated, yeah. So so it's all this history and also personal memory mixed uh, through this audio scape, yeah. Yeah, it's, no, it's incredible. <laughs> like like I said, it's it's very very complex and like. I think you could watch and listen to the film many times and not catch every detail and so on. Um, but um, but it also, it strikes me that the sound isn't just one of sort of the instruments that the film plays, it's also a subject, uh, a, quite directly a subject of, of the film. And it also occurred to me when I was thinking about, um, you know, uh, some of your short films that were that were showing like this weekend, it's not the first time that that has kind of been the case where sound, like I, I can't remember, I'm, You'll have to forgive me. I can't remember the title offhand, but there's a there's a short film where a, a kid is trying to find a sound to accompany an image. Do you know? Ghost of Asia. Yeah, I think ah. so. Yeah, and and so I I I, I thought of this as kind of a, um, a curious through line in your work that hadn't really presented itself to me. Um, uh, before and it made me it made me curious to know sort of how you th how you think sa like sound has changed in your work over time like do you do you think about it a bit differently now uh, like in a you know in working on a film like this versus the way that you thought of sound earlier on perhaps I think it's equally or it's more mental you know when we think about observation and I think for me to go to a place like Colombia, I, I need to to close my eyes a lot and just to to be um, connected through through listening because I think visual is really strong meaning. There's a lot of information, no? That's why when you meditate, you close your eyes and so that you you can really understand, uh, you know, the or, or your mind is really quiet. And so I, I feel that um, that's why it's also part of my insistence to that films, you know, not only this film, the one that I made should be experienced like this, um, because it's about this head, this big head that we are in, and and, and audience part of the experience of, of that. So it's it's really a, a journey through technology, you know, how how um, from different sound system, you know, from stereo S SR to 5.1, 7.1 at most, and, you know, it's, it's really important um, because we talk about um, cinematic, no? And we think about image, you know, vista, cinematic, but, but actually sound for me is cinematic too, you know, so it's important. Well, I want to make sure we have, we have time to take some questions from the audience, so... Um, so yeah, if you have a question, just raise your hand. We'll bring you a microphone, and we're gonna start. We'll start right here. Hold on, hold on. We're gonna bring your mic. Um, thanks again for being here with us. Um, I think a lot about your decision to keep the film in theaters, and not streaming. And also Hernan's, uh, how he talks about uh, memory when he's scaling the fish. I'm wondering how sort of those choices um, relate to your image production going forward. 
in terms of the media landscape and yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, I think it. What what is it about Arnon? Um, uh, just the just when he's talking about, I can remember everything. Oh, There's I so see. many images, and then you're choosing not to allow this to stream, which is a very yeah, yeah. bold decision. And I'm just wondering how that spirit of that decision is affecting your image production going forward and the kinds of images you choose to create. For sure, it's, it's all about this frame, no? And it's about the size of, in relation to, to you. Um, and, and how you say, like that scene, no? When Ernan sleeps or dies, <laughs> you experience together this this stop of narrative, you know, the film kind of refused to go on, and then, oh, what, what happened? Whereas if you stream the movie on the laptop, you know, you can pause any time, so the death can happen many times. So, so this is something that we, we flow together in the same river, and then, oh, suddenly, you know, and, and it's about this collective also experience, no? When, when you, at the restaurant, when, when Jessica, hears that, that nobody here or except you. So that means you kind of complicit and you become her and then you're really attentive in, in listening, no? So it's only happened here and yeah. Yeah, back on the left. No, uh, go back like uh, six rows. Thank you. Hi, um, thank you for this film. This is my fifth time seeing it. And <laughs> I'm always struck by the moment where um, Jessica and the younger Hernan are seeing the refrigerators and the film switches to a handheld um, cinematography. Whereas you know, the rest of the film is very static or when there is motion, it's you know, anchored by the, the tripod. So I was curious if there was a deliberate choice made in that moment to switch to handheld, if it was purely a practical choice, or if you know, there was a, a deeper sort of um, aesthetic principle there. Thank you. Mm, I'm trying to think of my, mm, I don't remember. I, I don't think there's any reason. I, I just, I don't know, see it. And, and to see location, to go to the fridge store, it's um, that experience, yeah. But I don't know, that there's some kind of kinetic and I don't know, maybe love, um, the idea of urgency and and the next shot, uh, where it's a long dolly shot, no? Um, that, that, you know, the first take, Tilda just said like, oh, this is like a, a, a how do you say, it's, a, it's a, what did she say? She said it's like a musical. <laughs> and, and I agree because the way she, walk and then stop and then kind of flirt together what to do and then walk it is, is really like uh, the old style musical tease yeah. yeah so maybe it's about that the dynamic of um, yeah feeling yeah it's a lot of hands um we'll give the side of the room some some love we'll, this guy right here in the glasses What is the role of language um, in your filmmaking and how did that change with this film in particular? Um, I don't know, I saw bits and pieces of my last past films, you know, this past month. Um, and I feel that it's, um, this, this film is more um, what to say? Maybe it's more more still um, and very economical. Um, when I look at tropical malady, you no, know, I say, oh, there's so many shots, and um, I don't know. Is that what you mean, the language? And yeah. Ah. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, something I cannot. Um, in the beginning, I thought I would. Uh, be able to, you know, um, to understand not only language but 
um, costume, um, setting, and um, also speed. But uh, when, actually I told before, is, is, is when I was looking at Ozu film, and I talked to my Japanese friend, like, oh, I really like Ozu because it's so natural. And he said, no, Ozu is really fake. <laughs> the, the language is really stiff. And that time, I, I hope he's right, I don't know. But, but I feel like, oh, I didn't know at all. And, and then there's some re, uh, casting tape coming, uh, link, uh, Memoria. And the actors, you know, and I say, oh, I really like this take, you know, the fifth take or whatever, it's very natural. And they said, no. Again, they say, oh, it's like soap opera. <laughs> so I gave up and then I said, <laughs> and it's the best thing because, because it's unlike in Thailand, you know, I, I really control, I really like, okay, it have to be this and that, but, but there I don't know. So I say, okay, your department, your department, and I'm focused on Tilda, you know, and the language coach. And so, so it's, it's become a, a big uh, collaborative work and, um, a lot of input and from the team. Um, yeah, but, but still, with the language code, I asked them to be slower than normal, maybe 10% slower or something, yeah. Mm -hmm. Because they speak so fast, and yeah. Mm. All right here. Uh, 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 is there a reason that so many of your films seem inspired mostly by death? Death? Yeah. Mm, I think so. Because I, I grew up in the hospital area because my parents were doctors and so it's our playground and also this place where they keep bodies. Uh, but of course I, I didn't look at it you know, f philosophical way, but um, but I'm always interested in that. Um, when when my father passed away in 2003, just right before shooting Tropical Malady, you know, I think that's that's quite a turning point. Um, uh, even though I was not close to my dad, I I was so I so miss him and. And feel the loss of, uh, you know, not be able to share something with him. Um, and but but then that that changed me because I, I feel like to to study death or to actually read a lot of Buddhism is a way to to understand that idea of longing uh, or attachment. And yeah, so so it become quite a crucial part, you know, in the way of looking and and seeing film as something very ephemeral and um, as, as a question also of how do you frame um, something that already died, like the memory or some, and then you're recreating another world, um, you know, and so, but it's not real, so it's end up being like ghost and, and it's only come alive when the, the lights come on the screen and then it's gone. So there's the certain kind of um, kind of ritual. No, we we're looking at this past light and and yeah. Um, but for me, everything is so it's so continuous. No, it's like and always new. No, like this screening is never come back. You know, with different people, different temperature, and yeah. So it's always uh, I don't know. Is that related to? Yeah. All right, so we have time for like one or two more, so just letting you all know that 90% of you are going to be disappointed <laughs> in a second. Um, we'll go, uh, someone in the back have their hand raised? No? Change your mind? Okay, yeah. <laughs> in the back in the white shirt. Wow, uh, I was lucky. Um, yeah, well, you were talking at the beginning about how uh, this journey uh, in Colombia, like you, you wanted maybe to do it in, in your own country and like the need to look for another place. So I was wondering if there was something particular about Colombia other than the landscape that inspired some of the fragments of the film. And I'm thinking particularly 
on uh, one of the first scenes when they're crossing this avenue, this Seven Avenue, where you hear this sound and someone jumps to the floor. Mm. And I, I'm Colombian, so I, I found that very, it really spoke to me of what, what I would do if I was on the street and I heard a sound oh. like that. Yes, yes. Um, so I was wondering if these and or other examples kind of inspired you to, to from, from the place itself. Yes, I, I think it's a, about shifting. I mean, the first impression of Bogota is about how massive the mountain and the clouds and, and how everything changed so quickly, you know? In one day, you have four weathers. So it's, 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 a, it's like a temperamental landscape. And whereas one is stuck, you know, like Jessica is stuck, you know, among this shifted. And so I found it very um, profound. Um, and and many of the films um, are from real life, you know, when I was there, including that explosion, you know, and that guy <laughs> jump. And and I talked to many friends and you know people on the way about what what this loud noise mean to to them, you know, to bang. And and many people talk about you know this uncertainty is you know about when the bang happened, you know, sometimes you're in the car driving and, or, or in the traffic and you just become frozen and your mind just racing, like, is that a bomb or is that a firework or is that a, someone shooting someone? So, so it's all about this anticipation. So the film is about that too. It's about, yeah. And, and, and so, so there's a lot of also research um, about the sound in, in Colombia. And when we show the film in Bogota, there, there's also a lot of resonance about um, this kind of memory and how people view it uh, as a very political, in, in the political way. Yeah. Mm, yeah. All right, and this is going to be the last question. And we'll go right here. Keep it, keep it simple. No, right. Yeah. Hi. Uh, thank you so much. Um, I wanted to ask kind of, why is cinema so like ghostly or so related to spirits? Like, how is it that cinema makes us feel the afterlives of history? I don't know. It's a, it's a, my first experience was being in was in Taiwan, uh, Taipei, a long while back, and then to see to go to this Hu Shaoshan uh, Cinematheque. And at that time, there's this poster, uh, you know, like a huge print of um, the actors from, I think from um, Dust in the Wind, um, or City of Sadness, I'm not sure. Um, that, and they're so young, and they're so, like frozen there. And, and somehow I think about ghosts, about how, how cinema function is, is to preserve this ghost. And, um, and how making it is, is part of the, you know, it both killing it or resurrecting it at the same time because you, 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 you recreate a world of memory um, kind of simulating but at the same time replacing the real memory by framing and how you look at it from the present. And so it's a dialogue of, you know, maybe yourself and, and that that self in the past or with some landscape. Yeah. Um, so so it's, um, it's a very peculiar um, activity. Um, but until now, I'm not sure why I make movies. And it's, um, yeah. I think that, that's actually a, a quite a nice note, perhaps for us to end on for, for right now. To be continued. Yeah, to be continued. Um, so, if, so yeah, if you're seeing I Walked with a Zombie at 9.30, we'll see you in you know, 25 minutes, and if not, uh, Picha Pong will be back uh, the next two nights uh, for some more discussion. So, uh, so yeah, come back for that, and thank, thank you very you. much. Thank you.